Okay, if you don't have time to watch a whole thing, here's the elevator version. This is a pupa, also known as a chrysalis. This is a cocoon. A pupa is something you turn into. A cocoon is something you make. An insect turns into a pupa before turning into an adult. Some insects also make a cocoon to protect themselves while this happens. Cocoons are usually made out of silk. Pupae are made out of organs, like you. this from the beginning. The oldest and simplest way for an insect to develop is to come out of the egg looking pretty much like a tiny version of an adult. And then as you grow, you shed your skin, which is also your skeleton because insects, and after a few of these molts, you get equipped with your sexual bits. This is called ametaboli, and the only insects that still work this way are a few old and somewhat obscure groups, the most famous of which is probably the silverfish in your bathroom. All other insects evolved from a lineage that stop molting and therefore stop growing in size once they reach sexual maturity. But in exchange, they get another special prize for becoming adults, wings! There are two ways that this can work. One way is for the young insects to carry around their developing wings like a little backpack. And once they go through their final molt, the wing buds turn into complete wings, and we have our adult cockroach, or dragonfly, or grasshopper, or earwig, or mantis, uh, to name a few. This is called hemimetaboli. And then there's a final group of insects that took it one step further. Their young aren't just wholly wingless, they also look rather different, sometimes completely different, from the adult form. This is called holometaboly, meaning complete change. Some of these young are called caterpillars, or grubs, or maggots, but the technical term for an animal that looks very different from its adult self is larva. Insect larvae still grow and molt and grow and molt, but the last couple molts are different. First, the fully grown larva sheds its skin to reveal a pupa. A pupa is a non-feeding life stage, the function of which is to allow the complete makeover from larva to adult. It's important to note here that the pupa isn't a shell or a container or something, it is the insect. It lives and breathes and, in some cases, moves. But most of what a pupa does happens under the skin, and that's where things get really interesting. Once the pupa's skin has become sufficiently hard, it proceeds by getting rid of all the old body parts its adult self won't need. Depending on just how different the adult is going to be in terms of how it lives and what it eats, this can be quite a lot of stuff, including its old legs, mouth parts, and digestive tracts. These larval tissues are broken down and turned into fuel and building materials for what comes next, given that the pupa can't eat. That's not all that different from what happens when cells get broken down and replaced in your own body, except that holometabolous insects do a lot of it in one go. The pupa's insides don't turn entirely into soup, no matter what some people on the internet will tell you. Uh, things do get pretty messy in there, but none of this would work if the developing insect didn't retain, among other things, a working nervous system, a respiratory system, and hormone system throughout the whole process. Although, all those systems do get quite heavily remodeled along the way as well. The brain in particular gets expanded upon rather than replaced during metamorphosis, which explains, by the way, how insects can retain information that they learned during their larval stage. The next step is nicely taken care of through a neat little build an adult body kit that the insect has carried with it since birth. These are the imaginal discs, little packets of tissue that are pre-programmed to turn into mouth parts, eyes, antennae, legs, and best of all, reproductive organs. I mean, wings. Well, actually both. The way that an imaginal disc turns into, say, a fully formed leg is fascinating, almost like deploying an inflatable toy. Um, but lest I go start the next caterpillar soup meme, note that I'm being metaphorical. Once development is complete, the insect will molt one final time, this time shedding its pupil skin to reveal its adult body. Incidentally, because a lot of weight was burned off during metamorphosis, its final size is considerably smaller than it was as a fully grown larva. There we have all our three modes of insect development and all of the life stages within them, but wait, what about cocoons and chrysalises? Well, chrysalis is really just a synonym for pupa. It comes from the Greek word for gold because some butterfly pupae are kind of goldish. 
A cocoon is something different. It's not a stage of life. It's a product that some insects will make to protect their bodies during development, like a nice little sleeping bag. Cocoons are especially common in moth caterpillars, and they're usually made out of silk, which is produced by the larva's mouth parts, and or bits of twigs or leaves or other materials. Uh, a cocoon doesn't have to contain a pupa either. For example, some insects will spend the winter in a cocoon, but then they'll pupate out in the open anyway. So, how to tell these terms apart? Well, it's simple. A pupa is like a teenager, a transitional stage that needs to be passed through in order to get to adulthood. They may look quite lifeless, but a lot of serious stuff is going on on the inside. Meanwhile, a cocoon is like a bed, a cozy, protective shell that some teenagers, or pupae, spend most of their time inside of. 